Lena, a dedicated mother to her young son and daughter, was reluctant to leave them in the care of a nanny, however, due to unavoidable circumstances, she had to make that choice, never foreseeing the shocking discovery she would make upon her return, she found her children with bruises, an outcome she had never anticipated, it was a radiant Sunday morning, and Lena was enjoying a cup of tea on her porch, the sun shone warmly, casting a golden glow over the scene as her tall husband, Todd, busied himself in the garage, the air was filled with the melodious chirping of birds, creating a picturesque, almost idyllic atmosphere, yet, despite the seemingly perfect external world, Lena's heart was weighed down with anxiety and the myriad fears only a mother could understand. After taking a hiatus following the birth of her first child, Lena was on the cusp of returning to her much-loved career. She adored her children with a depth akin to the ocean, but the thought of relinquishing her successful career was unbearable. During a heartfelt conversation, Todd had suggested hiring a nanny to ease the transition, but Lena was hesitant. She worried about her young son, Jeremy, who was known for being a handful, and the thought of leaving her children in a stranger's care filled her with dread. Lena wrestled with the decision, leaning towards pausing her career for her children's sake. However, everything changed when they eventually decided to hire Bella, a young woman who came. Highly recommended, just a week prior, Lena had expressed her reservations to Todd, saying, the children are very young, and they need me, I can give up this job, Todd, ever supportive, had responded, come on, Lena, I know you love your job, and I appreciate how much you care for our children, but Jeremy is a big boy now, he's four, and he doesn't need his mother around all the time, and loved, she's only two, let's try it with a nanny, Lena knew deep down she was conflicted, despite her maternal instincts urging her to stay home. She was also a highly ambitious woman who had always envisioned achieving more than just domestic milestones. She wanted to make a significant mark in her professional field. I can't force you to return to work, but please think about it. Todd had continued, many families hire nannies successfully, we'll thoroughly vet them, ensuring we have all the necessary information and identity verifications. After pondering for a few days, Lena began to see the logic in Todd's words. Perhaps it was indeed possible to balance her career and motherhood with the right help, so, they embarked on the process of finding a nanny, interviewing numerous candidates before choosing Bella, who lived nearby and seemed trustworthy. Bella visited their home on a Saturday morning, she was a brunette with striking blue eyes and a peculiar, yet charming smile that slightly unsettled Lena at first. Despite this, Lena tried to put her unease aside as Bella greeted them warmly. It's a pleasure to work for you, sir and madam. As Bella interacted with the children, a mix-up occurred when she mistakenly thought they were twin girls. The tension in the room momentarily spiked before laughter diffused the awkwardness. By Monday, Lena found herself preparing to leave for work, her heart still fluttering with apprehension as she entrusted her children to Bella, waving goodbye. Bella held loved in her arms while Jeremy stood by her side. Have a wonderful day, mom, Bella called out. Cheerfully, Lena drove off her mind a whirl of emotions, but hopeful that she had made the right choice for her family and her career. As Lena sat at her desk, her mind was incessantly drawn to her children. She couldn't shake off the nagging questions. Was Bella attentive enough? Had she remembered to give Jeremy his allergy medicine? It seemed to her that people often overlooked the fact that she had two children, not just the twins. The anxiety was palpable, her heart racing with each thought of their safety, driven by her concerns, Lena found herself dialing Bella's number every 15 minutes, needing the reassurance that everything was alright, each call was a mix of instruction and inquiry, please remember Jeremy is allergic to dust, she would remind Bella earnestly, don't let him play on the dusty playground, no matter how much he pleads or cries, Bella, ever patient on the other end of the line, reassured Lena with a calm and soothing tone, I understand completely, don't worry. Lena. Jeremy and your daughter are the most adorable children I've ever cared for, they are truly wonderful, and everything here is perfect. Each affirmation from Bella brought a momentary relief to Lena's racing heart, yet, as time ticked by, the cycle of worry and reassurance continued until Lena could hold her children close again and see for herself that they were safe and sound. Raising my children has been a challenging journey, especially with Jeremy's boundless energy. Initially, I suspected that his hyperactivity might be indicative of a deeper issue. Meanwhile, there have been concerns regarding our nanny, Bella. She often seems forgetful and has a tendency to overindulge the children, which has made me question her suitability for the role. Despite these concerns, 
I discussed the situation with Todd, who was initially skeptical about hiring Bella, nevertheless, after observing her for a week, it appeared that Bella managed quite well, which was a relief, the children. Always seemed happy and well cared for upon my return home, suggesting that Bella might be more competent than we first thought, Lena, on the other hand, had her reservations and struggled to fully trust Bella, yet, every time she returned from work and saw the children content and engaged in playing with their toys, her worries would temporarily subside, it seemed as though Lena was always bracing herself for something to go wrong, but thankfully, everything was under control, the situation at home was stable, and Bella was proving herself to be a reliable, if somewhat unconventional, nanny, Lena was gently kissing them goodbye when she noticed the bruises marking Jeremy's knee, what happened, darling, how did you get those, she asked, her voice laced with concern as she scrutinized the injuries, her eyes, wide and anxious, soon found more bruises, Jeremy, what happened here, did Bella do this, did she hurt you and your sister, she pressed, fear rising in her tone, no, mom, no, Jeremy, stammered, shaking his head vehemently, we just fell, mom, we were playing, Bella didn't hurt us, he insisted, but something in his voice made Lena's heart sink with worry, deep down, a troubling thought nagged at her, was Bella forcing the children to lie about what happened, that evening, fraught with concern, Lena confided in Todd, who was quick to anger and ready to confront Bella, I don't want her anywhere near my children, Lena expressed firmly, determined to protect her family from any potential harm, Lena was visibly upset as she confronted Todd, her voice filled with concern, Todd, I've noticed bruises on Jeremy's knee, and he seems hurt, but what's this nonsense he's writing about how he got them, he claims that he and Bella just tripped while playing, can you believe he's just covering for her, Todd remained silent, his arms crossed over his chest, giving nothing away, what did Lena ask you, you don't seem angry, she continued, her frustration growing, she's making our Children lie, stop downplaying it, Todd, they could have been seriously hurt when they fell, you're just casting unnecessary doubts, are you serious, Todd, you believe her but not me, Lena pressed, her voice tinged with disbelief, why would the children cover for her, she questioned, her mind racing with possibilities, Todd finally spoke, his voice calm yet dismissive, but why would they cover for her, Lena, maybe the aid to Bella was forced or threatened, Lena was convinced that Bella was somehow causing harm to their children, but Todd did not share her suspicions. This fundamental disagreement left Lena feeling isolated and unheard, struggling with the fear that something was amiss and that her concerns were being ignored. The following day, Lena resolved to take decisive action to ensure the safety of her home and family. With Todd departing early for work and the children still nestled in their beds, the house was quiet, giving her the perfect opportunity to enhance security measures. Thus, Lena discreetly arranged for the installation of surveillance cameras in various strategic locations around the residence, she made these arrangements without informing any family members to maintain the element of surprise. To help with this task, Lena called upon Bella, asking her to come by later that day to assist in setting up the surveillance system. Lena had grown increasingly distrustful of Bella and was determined not to let her potentially jeopardize the well-being of her children. This new layer of security was a necessary step to monitor any unusual activities and gather evidence, fueled by a mix of concern and resolve, Lena quietly muttered to herself, I'm going to report this woman, if she tries to harm my babies, she will regret it, I won't let anyone question my instincts as a mother, Lena's protective instincts had kicked in full force, and she was ready to do whatever it took to safeguard her family from any perceived threats, upon Bella's arrival, Lena instructed her to look after the children, then left for work, at her office, Lena activated her iPad's camera to check in on the scene at home, she watched Bella engaging playfully with the kids, assisting them with their coloring, everything appeared normal, however, around 4 p.m., Lena observed Bella leading the children upstairs, which unexpectedly made Lena anxious, watching the live feed, Lena muttered in disbelief, what is she doing behind my back, disturbed by what she saw, Lena informed her boss of a family emergency and hurried home, on reaching home, Overwhelmed by her emotions, Lena burst into tears, I'm really sorry, she managed to say, you're home early today, Mrs. Hoods, Bella responded, surprised, we didn't want you to find out this way, it was then revealed that Bella, a former dance teacher, had been teaching the children to dance as a surprise for Lena's upcoming birthday, 
The reason for taking the children into Lena and Todd's room was because that's where the music system was. Everyone, including Todd and the kids, had been in on the secret, feeling extremely guilty. Lena apologized to Bella, confessing, I suspected you of wrongdoing. I even installed cameras because I thought you were a threat to my children. I'm so embarrassed by my actions. Don't worry, Mom, you just spoiled the surprise a bit, said Bella empathetically, suggesting they could still keep their dance routine a secret from Lena to maintain some element of surprise. Later, feeling abashed, Lena apologized again to Bella, who reassured her, understanding the protective instincts of a mother. A week later, the children performed their dance, moving Lena to tears. The family celebrated with lots of cake, laughter, and joyful tears. Through this, Lena realized just how fortunate she was to have Bella as their nanny, appreciating her more than ever after watching this story. How do you feel about it? Next, there is another story. Let's continue to see it. Despite breastfeeding her baby, Mrs. Martinica's son, Ricardo, continued to lose weight inexplicably. The local doctor in the small town of San Lucido eventually noticed something unusual, not with the baby, but with Mrs. Martinica herself, a well-known and ever-smiling new mother despite facing numerous challenges. Three months earlier, she had delivered Ricardo, who initially appeared perfectly healthy and joyful. However, as days passed, Ricardo did not gain weight as expected. Instead, he grew thinner. Mrs. Martinica, despite being a young woman, faced a significant health challenge herself. Weighing 160 kilograms due to an eating disorder that started in her adolescence fueled by insecurities and depression, she struggled with her weight, which soared further during her pregnancy. Postpartum, the situation grew more complex as she developed depression and was prescribed strong antidepressants, making breastfeeding unsafe. Consequently, she had to rely on formula milk to feed Ricardo. Throughout her pregnancy, despite warnings about potential risks to her and her baby's health, Mrs. Martinica found it impossible to adhere to a diet. Her attempts at eating healthily were short-lived. Overwhelmed by her long-standing eating disorder, she indulged in all types of food, particularly sweets, at any time of day, exacerbating her condition. Despite these challenges and her struggle with postpartum depression, Mrs. Martinica proved to be a devoted mother to her son. She showed deep affection and attentiveness towards her little boy, Ricardo. As a new mother, her primary goal was to Excel in motherhood, especially since she considered herself a good person despite facing many challenges, her love for her son was profound, and she felt fulfilled in her marriage. Her husband had always dreamed of having a beautiful family, a dream that came true with the birth of Ricardo at just three months old. However, Martinica soon noticed something troubling, Ricardo wasn't gaining weight, which greatly concerned her as she knew how crucial proper weight gain was during the early stages of a child's life. Upon closer observation, she realized not only was he losing weight, but he also had difficulty with bowel movements, seemingly having little to digest. This alarming realization prompted Martinica to seek her husband's assistance. She expressed her worries to him, saying, Honey, I think something might be wrong with Ricardo's digestion or he might be ill. He's not gaining weight and his bowel movements aren't normal. Her husband was supportive and they decided to see a specialist the following day. Driven by their concern, they visited the doctor and explained the situation. After thorough examinations and some tests, the doctor brought them encouraging news. Ricardo was relatively healthy but he was having trouble absorbing his formula milk. The doctor suggested a simple solution. Try a different brand of milk. This advice gave the parents some peace of mind. Knowing that the issue seemed manageable and that Ricardo didn't have any severe intestinal issues. They followed the doctor's advice and initially, the change in milk seemed to improve Ricardo's weight and his digestive issues. However, just when they thought the problems were resolved, the issues started to recur. A month later, the young boy had lost more weight. Despite Martinica's close attention to her son's weight, she barely noticed the decline. In response, she increased the number of feedings, offering bottles throughout the day, which the boy eagerly consumed, yet, he still failed. To regain weight, his parents were baffled and worried. They consulted the doctor once more. The medical professionals confirmed their grave concerns. The boy's continued weight loss was alarming given his young age. The doctor recommended switching the milk formula, emphasizing the need to find a suitable type for the child's digestive needs, crucial for his health and well-being. Despite trying various brands, no formula led to any significant improvement. The child willingly drank from the 
bottle, yet no weight gain followed, leaving his parents increasingly anxious about his inability to grow as expected. This troubling situation deeply impacted Martinica, causing her anxiety, stress, and depression to soar. In search of comfort, she began eating more, which led to her gaining a considerable amount of weight. Unfortunately, this only worsened her health, triggering severe conditions such as sleep apnea, gastrointestinal issues, joint problems, and developing varicose veins and edema, deteriorating her overall health further. Martinica was experiencing the most challenging phase of her eating disorder, which severely impacted her health and overall well-being. Healthcare professionals in Martinica quickly recognized the decline in her health. Her primary physician, concerned by her worsening condition, altered her prescription in an effort to emotionally stabilize her. Unfortunately, he failed to consider the potency of the new medication, which led to severe side effects. Soon, Martinica began to experience excessive drowsiness. The high dosage meant she was sleeping at odd hours, often for extended periods during the day. This new issue of constant fatigue compounded her problems, making each day a strenuous battle to maintain composure. As the primary caregiver for her child, Ricardo, this situation became even more difficult, adding to the strain. Her husband's demanding job left him unavailable to assist with their child during her bouts of sleep. Martinica had exhausted all suggestions from family, friends, and neighbors, and had tried numerous herbal and home remedies in hopes of finding some solution, even a miraculous one, to help Ricardo gain weight. Despite her relentless efforts, nothing seemed effective, and day by day, the boy continued to lose weight, leaving Martinica feeling increasingly helpless and desperate. Out of options and driven by desperation, Martinica decided to take one last piece of advice she hadn't yet tried. An elderly neighbor had suggested she consult Carmona, a woman known for her engagement with esoteric and mystical practices. Some referred to her as a healer, others as a shaman or medium. According to her neighbor, Carmona possessed extraordinary abilities that could address issues beyond the reach of conventional science. This choice filled Martinica with a sense of guilt as it meant entrusting her son's health to a local witch, at her wit's end and keeping it to herself without considering the potential consequences. She sought out Carmona's assistance, living in a secluded cabin in the heart of San Lucido, Martinica. Carmona was known to be a healer, Martinica drove directly to her home, where she was greeted by Carmona, a mysterious old woman with long, gray hair, dressed in white and looking slightly unkempt. The atmosphere that night was cloaked in an enigmatic air, fueling Martinica's fear yet stealing her resolve to do anything necessary to cure her son's baffling illness. Upon her arrival, before Martinica could utter a word, Carmona welcomed her at the door, announcing that she had been expecting her and cautioning that her fees were high. She justified her prices by the rarity of her knowledge and the honorability of her profession, assuring Martinica of the effectiveness of her work. Overwhelmed by the sudden influx of information and the stark warning about the costs, Martinica nonetheless clung to the hope that Carmona's assurances offered, with a mix of anxiety and hope. She decided to place her trust in the healer, who seemed to possess the mysterious solution she had desperately sought. After agreeing to the terms, Carmona welcomed her into the cabin, inviting her to step inside. When Martinica stepped into Carmona's cabin, she found herself in what seemed like a scene from a horror film. The air was laden with an odd scent, a blend of unidentified herbs. The decor was equally unsettling, adorned with jars containing preserved creatures. The whole cabin had a gloomy and chilly vibe. Carmona himself was as peculiar as his dwelling, characterized not only by his enigmatic look in eerie presence but also by his extraordinary pet, a wolf. Although loyal to Carmona, the wolf was hardly welcoming the guests, adding to the overall eeriness and Martinica's growing unease. As she took in the bizarre surroundings, a chill ran down her spine and her skin prickled with goosebumps. Part of her urged her to flee, yet another part was curious to explore the mystical expertise of this healer. Having made up her mind to stay, she was committed to trusting Carmona. Hand over the little one. I need to meet him, Carmona insisted, his voice casting a spell-like influence over Martinica. She passed the child to him, and Carmona cradled him, first checking his breathing attentively, then sniffing him, and finally focusing on his stomach while performing peculiar gestures. After his examination, he handed the child back to his mother and paced the room thoughtfully. After a moment of profound contemplation, he peered into a crystal ball and muttered some unintelligible 
phrases under his breath, seemingly oblivious to Martinique's presence, refocusing on his client, he gravely delivered his verdict, the child suffers from an evil spirit that drastically speeds up his metabolism, leading to rapid and hazardous weight loss, you are prepared to alleviate the little one's distress, he stated, Martinica was visibly shaken by the entire ordeal, despite her fear, she managed a shaky inquiry, that was the reason for Dona Carmona's visit, but what can be done, she asked, Carmona paused for what seemed like an eternity before answering smoothly, we can perform a spiritual cleansing to expel the malevolent entity plaguing the child, however, he warned, this ritual comes at a significant cost, as we are dealing with extremely negative energies, these energies linger in my cabin, requiring several purifications, nonetheless, I assure you, despite the difficulty and expense, the procedure will be effective, without hesitation, Martinica agreed to proceed. With the ritual, despite her fears, her overriding concern was for Ricardo's health, thus, the ritual commenced, after invoking spiritual aid, Carmona started by drawing the Star of David on the ground and encircling it with candles, in the midst of this circle, he placed the frightened Ricardo, the intensity of the ritual overwhelmed the little boy, and he began to cry, sensing the charged atmosphere enveloping him, Martinica's mother was eager to come to her grandson's aid, but Martinica asked, her not to get involved, Carmona, with great skill, lit some branches from unusual herbs that emitted a terrible odor, one that was as foul as rotten eggs, prompting Carmona's wolf to flee the hut, covering its nose, feeling compassion for little Ricardo, the healer cradled him in her arms and began to envelop him in the stench emitted by the herbs, she then urinated on him while chanting in unrecognizable languages with a peculiar tone, hoping to soothe his cries, she meticulously rubbed the herb branches over his body, focusing particularly on his head and stomach where she gestured mysteriously in the air, Carmona then administered a thick, green tea to Ricardo, upon drinking it, he vomited a yellow froth and started crying afresh, Carmona, with an enigmatic gleam in her eyes and a broad grin, continued the ritual, observed the phone closely, once he recovered, she handed Ricardo back to Martinica, announcing with a grave yet hopeful demeanor that the spiritual cleansing had been successful and he was healed, overwhelmed, Martinica laughed nervously and embraced her son with tears of relief, grateful for his apparent recovery, she then fulfilled her promise by paying Carmona's substantial fee, Carmona, proud of her honest work and deep esoteric knowledge, left feeling accomplished, initially, Martinica noticed a slight improvement in her son, but after a few weeks, Ricardo had lost the minimal weight he had regained during his brief period of respite and was back to his previous state, despairing as her world seemed to crumble and feeling like she had exhausted all options, Martinica wondered how she would manage to look after Ricardo if she couldn't even sustain herself, in a burst of distress, she reached out to her mother for help, she had no intention of creating further issues, particularly for her mother, Dona Filomena, who was not only advancing in years but also had fragile health, however, overwhelmed and desperate for support, Martinica found herself confiding in her mother amidst tears. Confessing her helplessness, I've tried everything, she lamented, I've changed the formula numerous times, tried all sorts of home remedies, and even consulted an alternative healer in the village who charged me a whole month's salary to treat little Ricardo, I'm at my wit's end, mom, Dona Filomena listened intently to her daughter's woes over the phone, absorbing the gravity of the situation that plagued both her daughter and grandson, although she was unsure how to resolve the issue, she resolved to temporarily relocate to Martinica's home to assist her daughter in managing the crisis. The following day, Philomena arrived at Martinica's residence, promptly making herself at home and began observing Ricardo attentively before offering any suggestions. During the initial days, she meticulously noted every detail of her grandson's daily routine, from his dietary habits to his sleep patterns, and scrutinized the components of his formula and other minutiae. Everything seemed normal. She found no fault in her daughter's methods, which only deepened the family's perplexity as they were unsure what else could be adjusted to help Ricardo thrive, Filomena's watchful and affectionate attention was consistently directed towards Martinica, as she observed her daughter's unwavering commitment to caring for young Ricardo, each day, Martinica meticulously ensured that his feeding bottle was warm to the precise temperature and soothingly rocked him in his nursery, Filomena, ever. Respectful of this intimate mother-son bonding, 
remained a silent observer, offering her quiet presence as a comforting form of support as the days unfolded, everything seemed orderly yet puzzlingly unresolved, compelling the family to seek a solution amidst their confusion, Philomena's role was supportive, primarily observing the child while Martinica took much-needed rests, drained from her ongoing medication regimen and the chronic mental strain that had accumulated over the years, despite the family's efforts, Ricardo struggled with his health, specifically with weight gain, which brought Martinica to tears every time her son was readmitted to the hospital. After several tense days, the medical team finally announced that Ricardo was out of immediate danger. Before sending him home, they recommended a regimen of specialized nutritional formulas and emergency supplements. Initially, these seemed to make a positive difference. Ricardo became more responsive and began to show signs of increased vitality. However, this improvement was short-lived, and he soon suffered a setback that sent Martinica spiraling into an unprecedented state of despair. The prospect of losing her son was an unbearable thought for Martinica, and despite her fervent efforts, she felt utterly powerless. This relentless cycle of hope followed by despair left her grappling with the most profound depression she had ever experienced, overshadowed by a pervasive sense of helplessness that haunted her. Every moment, this ongoing stress exacerbated her own health problems, driving her to seek comfort in excessive eating. Her weight spiraled out of control, to the point where she dreaded confronting the reality of her situation. Eventually, her mother persuaded her to acknowledge her weight issues, and when Martinica finally weighed herself, she was shocked to find she weighed 200 kilograms. Overwhelmed by her circumstances, she felt that life was unduly harsh. Her mother offered consolation and reassured her that they would overcome these challenges together, despite also feeling uncertain but striving to be the supportive pillar her daughter needed. Despite Martinica's diligent care, Ricardo's health continued to decline as he persistently lost weight. He was frequently rushed to the hospital's emergency room, and while he showed temporary improvements after each visit, these signs of recovery soon vanished, leaving his family both worried and perplexed. Martinica was attentive and nurturing towards her son throughout his illness, yet, the cause of Ricardo's unexplained weight loss remained elusive. During this troubling time, Philomena, observing the situation, began to notice a recurring pattern of behavior even though Ricardo's weight issues seemed to stabilize briefly after his hospital visits, Philomena suspected that something undisclosed was occurring, she devised a covert plan, pretending to leave the house for the entire day, but instead, she secretly hid in the closet of the nurse's room to closely monitor her daughter's interactions with her grandson. From her hidden vantage point, Philomena watched as Martinica fed Ricardo with a bottle until he drifted off to sleep. This routine occurred several times a day, seemingly normal, yet Philomena continued her covert surveillance, meticulously noting every interaction between her daughter and her grandson. As darkness enveloped the room, there was an unexpected change in the environment. Martinica walked into the room once more but this time, exhaustion overcame her, and she fell asleep while Ricardo was nursing from his bottle. To Philomena's utter disbelief, the situation took a bizarre twist. A seemingly somnolent Martinica clumsily took the bottle from her son's hands and started drinking from it herself. This act, teetering on the edge of desperation or insanity, left Philomena utterly aghast and paralyzed with horror. She struggled to comprehend her daughter's strange behavior. After a few moments of shocked paralysis, Philomena could no longer just watch from her concealed position, she stepped forward and, with a decisive gesture, snatched the bottle away from Martinica. Martinica's response was unexpectedly violent, sending chills down Philomena's spine, especially when she realized that Martinica was still profoundly asleep. In a frantic attempt to wake her, Philomena resorted to slapping her, which jolted Martinica awake but left her completely bewildered and unable to understand what had just transpired. All the while, Ricardo wailed heartbreakingly, his cries filled with confusion and hunger. As the situation unfolded, Philomena began to piece together the puzzling events. It dawned on her that her daughter was sleepwalking, an insight that shed light on the perplexing and nightmarish events of the preceding nights. This realization brought a mix of relief and concern to Philomena as she contemplated the implications of her daughter's condition this. Revelation shed a ray of hope on Ricardo's medical condition, suggesting a potential improvement in his health. The morning after the discovery, Philomena experienced a profound sense of relief paired with a renewed sense of hope. The enigma surrounding the health of little Ricardo had been solved with an unexpected revelation. 
Martinica was grappling with an eating disorder that manifested itself in nocturnal eating episodes, unbeknownst to her, she had been consuming food during bouts of sleepwalking. This condition not only caused her to eat in her sleep but also led her to inadvertently consume the meals and even the milk meant for Ricardo. Every time she prepared food for her son and subsequently fell asleep, her subconscious drove her to eat his food and drink from his bottle, stripping Ricardo of the vital nutrition he sorely needed. The understanding of this disorder shed light on the baffling issue of Ricardo's inexplicable weight loss as they gathered to piece together. The puzzle, Philomena sat with her daughter and son-in-law, enveloped in the gravity of the situation, overcome with remorse for unintentionally starving her child, Martinica was reduced to tears, she sought forgiveness from her family, tormented by the unintended harm she had inflicted, her husband, in a gesture of support and love, wrapped his arms around her, providing comfort amidst the turmoil, together, they reassured Martinica that she was not at fault, instilling in her a sense of relief in the understanding that they now had the knowledge to confront this challenge. With a clear path forward, they committed to seeking professional help and exploring solutions, fortified by the bonds of family unity and a collective resolve to overcome this obstacle. From that point forward, Philomena and her son-in-law took on the responsibility of feeding little Ricardo. As time went by, the young boy regained his lost weight and blossomed into a joyful, healthy child. This incident served as a crucial wake-up call for Martinica. The realization of her neglect spurred her to address her dietary issues, which now bore a significance beyond her own health. It impacted her effectiveness as a mother. With determination and effort, Martinica improved her health to a stable state, and the family, bound by love and support, emerged stronger from this ordeal. They learned important lessons about care and responsibility. This concludes our story for today. We hope you found it enlightening and we invite your thoughts on the commendable role of the healer, were you anticipating this conclusion. Join us next time, and may you be blessed.